Good morning YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. Speaking on day 85 of the incarceration of Kirk Neville in an Indonesian prison for having smoked a joint of cannabis and having another joint ready rolled and having one gram in his possession at the time the police caught him on the 16th of February and he spent 68 days in prison before any of his YouTube friends knew that he was in jail and since then there's been 16 or 17 days of an Indonesia sucks campaign a war on the Indonesian drug laws launched by Gary Adin Mendem and the Inmendemite attack pack of stormtroopers aka Sturmgrab in Mendem and Sturmgrab in Mendem have been trying to change the Indonesian drug laws from the outside and uh, their ideal model is that Western tourists from civilised nations should not be subject to Indonesian drug laws especially over small number of grams of cannabis and therefore all the other Western civilised nations should break off diplomatic and economic ties with Indonesia because Indonesia sucks because they're a bunch of primitive savage barbarians who dare to believe in a god theory called Islam and therefore that's why they don't like pot smokers and thus and because they need to be told and this has been known as the uh, the Indonesia sucks campaign to free DE and I've been fairly outspoken in my theories that it's not a good idea to irritate the people who are locking up your friend but the antinatalists and the ethylists tend not to listen to me they don't like listening to me because I'm not an antinatalist and they hold the belief that anybody who's not an antinatalist is obviously wrong doesn't matter what they're talking about, they must be wrong because they're not an antinatalist. I'm not an antinatalist, therefore I'm supposed to be wrong. Quite error demonstrandum, it's perfectly logical to an antinatalist. So, the good news is, I spent all day yesterday trying to make this movie, and I got a f sort of a version of it that worked more or less alright, and it seemed to upload, but then I lost the web connection before it had finished processing, and instead of rebooting and doing yesterday's movie again I had a look at my subscribers scroll and subscription scroll and I found that Skid Row Radio had actual news from Jakarta the British Embassy in Jakarta emailed Skiddy and what they said by the way hi Skiddy what they said to him was that uh, they visited Kirk Neville he's in Simpanang jail if that's how it's said so zombie picture so was right you know look it up on the internet, that's the remand prison, somebody's just been arrested, he's going to be in the remand prison, you don't really need any super sweet tight connections all around the world to figure that one out, so yeah he's in Sinpanang, according to the British Embassy visitor, he appears healthy and cheerful and chatty, you know cheerful enough under the circumstances I think was what Scooty said, so that's excellent, it means that you know he hasn't been beaten up, starved, locked in the back room or anything like that. He, he's not doing too bad. The best news of all is that he's got a girlfriend in Jakarta who's been visiting him and he's got work colleagues who've been visiting him. So he hasn't had 68 days of oblivion before, you know, 16 days of his friends scattered around the world, unable to contact him, nobody caring, nobody knowing. He's had people on the ground, okay? so. <clears throat> the other excellent news is that uh, in a few weeks he's going to go to court and he has been led to believe that he can expect two to five years was how Skiddy described it and that confused Skiddy and that confused Forever Wolf Films. Hi Amanda, how are you going? Uh, because they'd been thinking in terms of four to twelve years. Let me just explain it to you. There's a thing called a head sentence 
the head sentence is what's available to the judge to hand out. So if, if 4 to 12 years is the available sentence for the bracketed amount of pot he's got, I'm assuming it must be less than 10 grams draws 4 to 12 years. That would kind of make sense because he had about 3 grams. If they're going to give him a 5 year head sentence, it means that he's at the lower end of the available sentences for under 10 grams of cannabis. The two years comes in when you look at the idea of a non-parole period, might be three years, and maybe a year off remissions for good behaviour. So it's faintly possible that he might get out in two years. So that indicates that um, he's got good legal advice and he's pleaded guilty. He hasn't tried to deny it and he hasn't tried to fight it and make a big expensive court case out of it. Uh, I suspect if he had converted to Islam he might have got out a lot earlier but he's probably unlikely to do that if he can at all avoid it. You know, maybe it will be a badge of honour to have done two years in jail rather than convert to Islam. It would be a good way of holding your head together actually, I think. Um, yeah, so he's, he's basically running along the track that I outlined in my first movie, you know, the day after I heard he was in trouble, a movie's called Asian Drug Laws Bracket MLV, close bracket, viewed from the south. So that's all going just swimmingly. Um, I've had an ongoing argument with a bunch of the In Mendemite Sturm group as to whether it's good or bad to do what Gary's doing and dump buckets of shit on Indonesia on the YouTubes. When I've said it's dangerous for Kirk because if the Indonesian government takes notice of it and connects your Indonesia sucks campaign with the prisoner they've got in jail, they could hammer him harder. I was told, don't worry about it, they don't take any notice of what we do, you know, we can say what we like because, you know, it's, it's all irrelevant what we say on YouTube. Well, Greytex got called an arsehole for asking the obvious question, uh, if what you say on YouTube is irrelevant, why do you bother making, making movies? Yeah, if nobody who's in a position to make a decision is going to watch your movie or pay it any attention, what is the point? You know? I make YouTube movies because I think people are watching them. And I think there is a point to that. I think for the 20 or 40 people who like watching my kangaroos and swamp wallabies it increases the amount of um, pleasure and happiness in their life for me to put the movie up so it's worth doing I'm you know sharing a bit of nature and wildlife that they don't get to experience in their day-to-day -day lives if I thought my movies were irrelevant I wouldn't bother making them let alone posting them Near as I can figure it, there are 300 cars getting around the planet with a streamlined solar panel on them. And that means an average of 300 tonnes per year not being emitted of you know, greenhouse gas to the atmosphere. My endangered species sanctuary is 100 acres. It only locks up 100 tonnes of carbon dioxide a year and it's, I can't afford to pay rates on any more. So my YouTube movies about sunfoils uh, saving three times more emissions than my hundred acres of regrowth forest can lock up. So I can't imagine bothering to make movies if I thought that nobody was watching. <clears throat> I'm still staggered at the idea that um, Gary has chosen to bet that he can make movies which may endanger Kirk and may subject him to extra suffering and he thinks that Kirk would be okay with that because it's necessary to Gary's campaign to change the Indonesian drug laws from outside and if Kirk has to suffer for Gary's campaign well you know think of him as a soldier in a war and when I first realized that Gary was saying that um, I actually tried to pointed out to him that it was a stupid way of looking at life. He was, you know, he was risking his friend's comfort, safety and possibly life. Now, here's Ad in Mendham Channel's movie Indonesia Sucks Day 3. I had a look at it on the 27th of April 
and I was so horrified that I actually tried to leave a comment on the thread and he's had me blocked for over a year so I sent the message testing that got through so whoops wrong way I sent him the following message and I'm going to read out the punctuation so you know life's like that warbles on a lot April 27 2013 ad in Mendham well 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 full stop I am indeed surprised dot 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 exclamation mark solemnly comma I say comma if you really hate DE's guts comma and you want to make the Indonesian prosecutors try to get his guts for garters dot 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 semicolon then keep goading them like this Gary full stop if you try hard comma you may turn him into the first effortless martyr to be so charged in a theocracy dot dot question mark but it won't be much good for my subscriber, comma, in an Indonesian jail, dot, dot, dot. So, comma, please, dot, dot, dot. Shut the fuck up, comma, or at least change your tone, full stop. Please, question mark. Ciao. So, it's not as if Gary was not aware of the possibility that his ranting could do damage to DE. He's stated in so many words in that clip that he doesn't care if DE gets extra beatings because he's making loud YouTube movies. His movies matter more than DE actually suffering. So said Gary. And I sort of, uh, I've been horrified and worried for the last 10 days or so. The reason I'm worried is because you people seem to think the Indonesian intelligence services are as pathetic as the American and English intelligence services. You know, like in England, last week they sentenced five people for taking rifles, ammunitions and pipe bombs in the back of a car, driving to a neo-Nazi right-wing extremist rally they wanted to shoot the shit out of and getting there an hour and a half too late. So they clustered in a group, went and bought fish and chips so that everybody would notice them arguing over what they wanted to eat in the fish and chip shop. Then they ate their meal in the park, again clustering in a memorable group, got in their car to go home and that's when they discovered they'd forgotten to pay the registration fee the week before. Thus and because well-mannered little English PC McPlod arrested them, impounded the car, let them go and made them walk home because the car wasn't registered. Three days or a week later when the homegrown jihadis failed to show up to collect their carload of guns and ammunition and pipe bombs, that's when the police opened the boot, found the lot and went looking for the bloke who didn't register his car and that's how the Keystone cops catch the terrorist in England. Right? They don't see them coming. They catch them when they go home after fucking up the time, to, time of the attack. In America, the Homeland Insecurity Department doesn't notice that the radical Muslim front for the liberation of Chechnya and Dagestan via blowing up the Boston Marathon is prepared to go bang at the finish line. And when they went bang, the Yankees spent three days wondering who the hell chose to go bang. Could have been anyone. They had no idea. They locked down the whole city. That's not at all how it works in Indonesia. In Indonesia, last week, Two people decided they were going to attack the Myanmar embassy. They got in a car with guns and ammunition and a couple of pipe bombs. They drove off toward the embassy and got shot dead by Detachment 88. And they didn't even get to the embassy because in Indonesia they monitor all the SMS, text messages, Facebooks, tweets for anti-Indonesian government sentiment because the dissidents are dumb enough to boast among themselves about what they would like to do. That was last week. Day before yesterday in southern Jakarta, Special Detachment 88 raided a house run by the Indonesian Mujahideen, shot one dead, arrested two, got a house full of guns, ammunition and explosives. Not last night, but the night before, they raided a house in southern Jakarta, or the, just, just south of Jakarta. They had a seven hour gun battle in the streets, they shot dead three, they arrested two and they got a house full of guns, ammunition and six more pipe bombs. The Indonesian Cyber Security Unit is a whole lot more efficient at noticing people who are saying horrible things about them than the American or the British is. Sorry about that. I still have um, 
strong feelings that it would be a good idea to not mention DE or his case in any movies you're making about how bad you think the Indonesians are because of their drug laws. Just try and separate the two. Get, get your Indonesia sucks campaign separate from the free DE campaign and be really bloody happy that DE's got a girlfriend and work colleagues in Indonesia who are looking out for him. So, now we have some uh, good news. Sturmgrappen in Mandham. We have orders from the Führer. Call off the attack. Recall the Stukas. Do not let the Heinkels take off. Stop the Panzers from crossing the border. We do not need to attack Indonesia. DE is kind of safe. He's just in jail. That's all. He has girlfriend on the ground. He has friends on the ground. We do not need to change Indonesia's drug laws. We need to stop annoying the fuck out of Indonesia. And anybody who tells you different is kind of like Gary, imitating Hitler, foaming at the mouth, biting chunks out of the rug, punching the floor, kicking the boards, moving non-existent divisions to thwart the Russian advance, um, behaving like a neurotic having a psychotic episode. Yeah? Histrionic narcissistic personality disorder with antisocial paranoid traits dissolving into agitated depression with reactive hypomania. The view from here, Sturm Grapp in Mendham, is that you should not follow your leader down a stupid track. At the moment DE appears to be safe. Don't make it any worse by expecting the Indonesians to completely miss your hate campaign against them especially if you keep sticking DE's name on your hate campaign. Shit, fuck, sorry, I rhymed. I tend to do that all the time. Ciao.